Maybe you stumbled on this video and you have hypothyroidism, Graves, or Hashimoto's, and you're just desperate to lose weight and feel good. You've tried several diets without any luck, and you heard that a ketogenic diet can help lose weight. Um, you, maybe you're even on a ketogenic Facebook page where people are just raving about how great a ketogenic diet is. But something deep down tells you that there's a lot more to this story and you're not 100% uh, drinking the keto Kool-Aid, as I call it. Well, hey there, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and in this video series, I'm going through some of the different reasons why I'm not a big keto proponent, like some of my celebrity keto colleagues, uh, some of the problems that I see when it comes to ketogenic diets, and really its impact on gut health. So what is keto? Well, the ketogenic diet, also known as the keto diet, really has become a very popular way of eating uh, over the last several years. Uh, you know, some speculate that the increase in popularity is really only due to the diet's ability to stimulate weight loss. Uh, but the keto diet involves drastically reducing the number of carbs consumed and replacing them with high amounts of fats. And the logic is pretty simple. It makes sense. Decreasing carbohydrates, increasing fats, puts your body in a more metabolic state where it's burning fat rather than burning carbohydrates. Be a fat burner rather than a sugar burner. And again, on the surface, this makes complete sense. Ketosis stimulates the burning of body fat while causing several other distinct changes in the body. While some of these changes are obviously beneficial, others are known to have adverse impacts on the overall health of the body and especially the gut microbiome. And given what we know about the importance of gut health on everything uh, going on inside the body, we need to generally and honestly uh, ask ourselves if the benefits of weight loss outweigh the problems that we cause to our microbiomes. Now, a high fat diet like keto is linked to many unfavorable changes in the types of gut bacteria. And this is referred to as uh, diversity. You see, your gut bacteria thrive on complex carbohydrates and fibers and starches and non-starch polysaccharides that are really only found in plant carbohydrates. These carbohydrates feed bacteria and promote very important species like lactobacillus and bifidobacterium. Lactobacillus bacteria are incredibly important because these gut bacteria are responsible for producing lactic acid in the body. Lactic acid in turn helps maintain the pH of the gut. And when it comes to the pH of the gut, the pH will determine what kinds of bacteria live and thrive in our gut and which ones pack up their bags and never to be seen again. And so while we don't uh, want the pH of the gut to become overly acidic and we don't want it to be too alkaline, very often when we start getting diseased bacteria taking over our gut, it's really because there's been a shift to this pH. Lactobacillus species lowers the pH of the gut. And when you do this, those pathogenic disease causing bacteria like mycoplasma and Klebsiella and E. coli, they don't want to stick around. So again, we need lactic acid in the gut lumen to prevent disease causing bacteria from taking foothold. The next thing that we want to talk about is the mucus layer. This is another problem with a high fat, low carb ketogenic diet or carnivore diet is that we tend to increase the kinds of pathogenic disease causing bacteria that often eat away at this mucus layer of the gut. Acromantia mucinophilia and many of the bacteroid strains live and feed on this mucus layer that lines our gut. And you see, your intestinal lining is really made up of a layer of epithelial cells that are covered in mucus, covered by a layer of mucus. And this layer of mucus, this is chock full of proteins called mucins that create a slippery gel-like coating. Well, why in the world might the mucus layer of your gut be so important uh, in this talk? Well, do you have an autoimmune disease? Do you have food sensitivities? Do you have allergies? Do you have malabsorption syndromes? Do you have leaky gut? Do you have histamine intolerance? Do you have skin conditions? Do you have diabetes? Do you have Crohn's or ulcerative colitis? If any of that is important to you, then obviously you wanna understand a bit more about this mucus layer of your gut and why it's so important. You see, it turns out that this mucus layer plays a crucial role in your gut health because it serves as the first line of defense against invading microbes. It protects your gut lining from bile acids. It protects you from toxins that are released by bacteria and food associated toxins. This mucus layer creates uh, a surface where it lubricates the luminal contents and acts again as a physical barrier. And so when you hear that statement, 90% of your immune system is in your gut, what we're really talking about is that mucus layer. You see, several studies also show that once your gut mucus layer thins out, um, those mucus degrading, mucus eating bacteria, you lose protection against many of the disease causing bacteria. You start to develop a leaky gut. Your gut becomes inflamed and swollen and irritated. You develop all kinds of food sensitivities and food allergies. You start reacting to all kinds of chemicals. You develop chemical sensitivities, in fact. 
And again, for some who are genetically disposed, you develop inflammatory bowel diseases like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Again, these are both autoimmune diseases. So again, maintaining the health of that mucus layer is one of the most important things you can do to heal your gut. And yet, high fat, low carb diets like ketogenic diets are being pushed on everyone and anyone without regard to their individual microbiome. Well, there's a problem that I see when working with patients when I run functional tests on my patients. And this is something that's even more common on patients with thyroid disease and Hashimoto's, uh, or even those patients with SIBO. And that's very low levels of short chain fatty acids. Now, when you aggressively cut out carbohydrates and eat high fat, low carb, uh, low fiber diets like keto and carnivore, you also suffer in another way. You end up with, again, low levels of short chain fatty acids. You see, your gut bacteria thrive on complex carbohydrates, on fibers and on starches and on non-starch polysaccharides that are only found in plants. And when your gut bacteria eat these foods, short chain fatty acids are produced. When you restrict fibers and starches and carbohydrates because you're following a low carb diet, those bacterial populations, they disappear. And when they disappear, so does your production of short chain fatty acids. And again, I see this all the time when I do testing. Again, short chain fatty acids are the superstars to improving gut health, and they're involved in so many areas of gut health. If you've ever had a stool test and your levels of short chain fatty acids came back low, this better be one of the main areas that you focus in on and improve on. And that's because one, short chain fatty acids help maintain the integrity of your gut barrier. They help regulate your immune system. They play a role in regulating inflammation. These short chain fatty acids play a role in creating bacterial diversity, which is very good for the body, for the gut. They are involved in cardiometabolic health and blood sugar levels. They help uh, glucose and lipid breakdown. And that's just getting started. Guess what low carb diets, high fat, like keto and carnivore do? Well, if you said lower your levels of short chain fatty acids and bacterial numbers and diversity, you win the prize. You'd be exactly right. And that's because again, remember only five to 10% of your total caloric intake is coming from carbohydrates when you follow a keto diet. Again, not good for your gut, not good to feed your gut. But what I find so interesting is that many of my celebrity functional medicine doctor friends are stressing how important the gut microbiome is to just about every disease, yet in the same breath, they're putting their patients on keto and carnivore diets all the time. Like I said, I run hundreds of functional stool tests every single year on patients, and I see low levels of short chain fatty acids almost all the time. So I'm in a position where I feel confident to say that what I see clinically and what I see from the studies that I've read are, are, are the same. It should be obvious that the goal when it comes to treating chronic conditions like thyroid disease and autoimmune problems and chronic inflammation is that chronic inflammation is not your friend and that high fat, low carb diets decimate your microbiome. They promote inflammation, they promote oxidative stress. And from a thyroid standpoint, remember, inflammation impacts TSH levels. It impacts T4 to T3 conversion. Inflammation affects your receptor sensitivity. A lot of things affected. All right, so there you go. That's going to wrap up today's video. Please leave a comment uh, in the section below. I'll do my best to answer any questions that you have. If you're interested in working with my clinic, you can reach out to me by visiting my website. If you haven't downloaded my free thyroid uh, guide yet, you can do that again by visiting my web website and just click on the free guide section. And lastly, if you like today's video, after you give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my YouTube channel, I recommend that you watch the next video in this series where I'll be talking again about so many different things as it pertains to keto and gut health.